The suicide of Jeffrey Epstein in August 2019 seemed like the end of a sordid tale of money, power, and sexual deviance. But even though Epstein is dead, the ongoing saga of the harm he did and his victim's quest for financial reparations are far from over. According to the New York Times, Epstein's estate was worth around $600 million at the time of his death. Now, however, that number is much lower due to lawyers' fees, legal settlements, and taxes and upkeep at his many properties while they were on the market. By January 2022, Epstein's estate was estimated at $185 million. But that November, the estate was ordered to pay more than $105 million to the U.S. Virgin Islands, who sued on the grounds that Epstein used his private island in that jurisdiction for sex trafficking purposes. It was Little St. Jeff's. That was his nickname for it. Though media outlets have access to a copy of Epstein's will, he managed to transfer his wealth into trusts, the details of which remain sealed to the public. This means the public will probably never entirely know exactly who benefits from Epstein's fortune. However, experts claim that at least two groups will benefit, the victims who continue their pursuit of damages and the people close to him who are named beneficiaries of his trusts. The identities of Epstein's beneficiaries are unknown, but there are two people who almost certainly stand to inherit what remains. First is the late Epstein's 30-year-old girlfriend, Karina Shuliak. Epstein dated Shuliak for several years up to his death and financially supported her in a number of ways, including helping to pay her dental school tuition. Though Shuliak has denied commenting to the press about her association with Epstein, the New York Times reported that she is one of his largest beneficiaries. Shuliak stuck by Epstein to the end and was the only person to receive phone calls from him while he was in jail. The first call was on July 30, 2019. The second was made the night before his suicide. Epstein told guards he was calling his mother, who'd been dead for years, when he actually called Shuliak. The second person who likely benefits from Epstein's estate is his brother Mark. Though this remains unverified, the fact that Mark Epstein had at least one business with his late brother and that he offered his condo as collateral for Epstein's bail point to the fact that the siblings were on good terms. In addition, there may be a number of other mystery beneficiaries. In 2019, the St. Thomas Source, a local Caribbean newspaper based just across from Epstein's private island, reported that Epstein's will alluded to additional beneficiaries who could stake their claims after his death. But these beneficiaries will have to fight Epstein's victims, many of whom received payment from a scheme called the Epstein Victims Compensation Program. The program distributed around $125 million to his accusers, but many have claimed it isn't enough. I was 16. I was 16. I started going to him when I was like 14, 15, 14 turning 15. Moreover, trust and estate experts point out that the fund was a clever tactic meant to shield Epstein's estate from future lawsuits. The victims who didn't agree to the remuneration set forth by the program are pursuing civil litigation. But even when all the legal issues are sorted out, there remains one last hurdle. How to get to Epstein's money. According to The Guardian, 48 hours before his suicide, Epstein drafted the will that divided up most of his wealth into trust funds. This makes it much more difficult for victims to access their due and necessitates the use of tax lawyers with sizable fees. And there's more. Throughout his life, Epstein hid his wealth in offshore accounts and shell corporations, so it's likely that much of his fortune will never be found. Once again, he had, you know, managed to escape any kind of uh, accountability. Then there's the fact that he was able to make a new will in his final days. Critics have slammed Epstein's lawyers and the New York prison system since the act of drafting a new will is often a sign of a pending suicide attempt. And finally, Epstein's suicide leaves the door open for lawyers to argue that he wasn't of sound mind when making the new will, which would ultimately void the trusts and make it easier for victims to collect on his fortune. 